What a week it was for Jason Duffner. The ups and downs of a professional golfer after back-to-back -back 65s, a five-shot lead heading into Saturday. Duffner started his Sunday four off the lead, and after that at 18, he wins by three. From five up to four down to a winner by three, Jason Duffner wins the Memorial. Golf Central starts now. Golf Central, brought to you by Titleist. They do give you a trophy when you win the Memorial Tournament presented by Nationwide, but no trophy is better than this. After the 72nd hole, an embrace and a handshake from the greatest of all time, the Golden Bear Jack Nicklaus, the host of this tournament, congratulating Jason Duffner on what was truly an incredible week. With that, we welcome you to Golf Central live from the Memorial Tournament Players Locker Room. Ryan Burr with Ohio State alum, 11-time PGA Tour winner John Cook, and of course the number one, former number one player in the world, David Duvall. I tell you these numbers, and it, it is tough to think the stock market doesn't go up and down the way Jason Dufter did, up five yep. to down four to a winner by three. Incredible stuff we witnessed. Yeah, that's professional golf, you know, and, and, and all the credit to Jason for, you know, the ups and downs of, of what he did this week. And to put yesterday behind him and relax and go out and just play golf like he knows how to play Jason Duffner golf, I'd give him all the credit in the world. Just a wonderful, great win on a great golf course. 65, 65, 77 and a 68 on Sunday. Uh, David, a lot of guys had a chance and will say they had a chance to win this tournament, but Duffner, especially on the back nine, he went and took it from everyone else. Well, we sat, uh, sat here on Friday after his stellar play through the first two days, speculating that it's difficult to see him not winning this golf tournament. I'll tell you what, we were right. You know, we didn't expect <laughs> it to happen right. this way. <laughs> But we were right. Uh, yesterday we also talked about it. It seemed like it was probably an anomaly. The biggest challenge was really just forgetting about it, chalking it up to a bad day and moving on. But you, know, it, you have to go out and you have to win a golf tournament over 72 holes. But him coming back and playing like he did today and winning, it, it's one of those events that happen a few times a year that just feels right because he had played so beautifully well through a couple days, had the hiccup, struggled with the putter, especially on, this, on, on the third round. But you know what? It, it figured it out today, and it just feels like he is the winner, and he is the winner, and, and it's exact, exactly what should have happened. And anyone that's ever played the game of golf, certainly the highs and lows that you experience with golf, uh, Jason Duffner went through it all over these 72 holes. So let's get to the action here from this Sunday. Ricky Fowler from the get-go came out red hot and took control early on. He looked in control early on. Uh, the 11th hole, par five. Beautiful little wedge shot, just a little bit long left of the hole. Controlled his distance, spin just perfectly. And Ricky in great position. Daniel Summerhays started the day with a three-shot lead. Now Summerhays for par at 11. After bogeying the tenth, need really need to make that. Couldn't let it get by. Falling too far behind at that point, bogey in the par five. And let's not forget about Jason Duffner. I think many did after the 77. He started the day four shots back, but on the back nine, he seemed to find all the magic he had Thursday and Friday. He'll remember a lot of shots from today, but I think this one right here, that is a very small section of the green to hit it there on number 12, to hit it eight feet from the hole, and then just bury this putt. I mean, this is... Maybe this didn't win the golf tournament for him, but I tell you what, it went a long, long way to winning this golf tournament. Meanwhile, playing alongside his good buddy Ricky Fowler. Fowler, the leader here, looking to save par at the 12. And Ricky does. Putted beautifully all week, did Fowler. And he keeps that lead with a par birdie par start to his back nine. Then the first weather delay of the day. How did that impact Fowler as they come back out? And he had a difficult play, just able to get it into the bunker. And then here at 13, out of the bunker, he's still your leader at 12 under. Yeah, short side a little bit here, tight from where he was, but it's a beautiful bunker shot, just a couple of feet. Now Ricky at 14, still at 12, so he was able to save par there. Another really small area to hit a, a, a shot into. The second shot at 14 just tugs it a little bit. 
goes a little bit past and long, and we know what makes we know what happens from there. It's just almost impossible to make a four unless you make a 10 footer. Unfortunately for Ricky, he did not make that 10 footer. Now to the par five, 15th. Duffner stocking his prey. Important golf shot here, having to go at the green and perfectly execute. Gets right onto the front of the green, leaves him no more than about 30 feet up the hill for eagle. Meanwhile, Fowler in a similar spot, trying to get on the green in two. Pretty aggressive play right here. Really wanted to keep it to the right of this whole location. Just tugs it again just a little bit. Gets it up in the gallery. It's just a bad spot from there. There's really nothing you can do but try to pitch it down there six or eight feet and he would end up making a par. Now Ricky will look at his last four or five holes. He was long and he was left uh, with great chances to get on the green and win this golf tournament. We meanwhile, Duffner lags to here. This for birdie. And Jason Duffner is the leader once again of the Memorial. He bounces back from the 77 on Saturday. He's in the lead and looking for more at 17. Just an incredible approach shot here. Staring it down, throwing it just to the right and behind the hole. Get it come back down off the slope a little bit. Easy tap in to pick up another shot. So a birdie there for Duffner. It's now a two shot lead as he heads to the 72nd hole, the 18th. A par would just about guarantee him a win of the Memorial. Bogey brings Fowler back into play. And that's not where you want to be. A horrendous lie on a down slope. And to make matters worse, another Wayne weather delay is coming. So Jason has to head inside the locker room and think about the shot that awaits. This would turn out to be a rather lengthy weather delay. They would resume play at 8.06, call it 8.05, and Duffner has a really tough shot, Cookie. Yeah, when he gets back out there, he assesses the situation. It is in the rough, on the downhill, awkward stance. Everything about this is just not, nothing about this is good. Takes a big hack out of it. You see the cabbage that he takes with it. Didn't quite get it to the fairway. Unfortunate there that uh, his tee shot ended up where it was. It brings bogey into play, possibly double. So the complex of this tournament has completely changed. Ricky needs to get it close at 18. And it's long and left again. You know, like so many shots he had on the back nine. Tugging him a little bit. Jason was able to hack his third up onto the green out of that other bad lie. And look at this. That's how a golf tournament should end. He lays down the hammer. Hammer time from Jason Duffner as he drops the rock on 18. Applause from the Nicholases and Jason Duffner. 13 under. Good for a three-shot win. Just unimaginable the depths that he came from. 65, 65, 77, and a 68 on Sunday to win Jason Duffner. 13 under wins the Memorial Tournament presented by Nationwide. And Jason is the subject of tonight's Titleist Tour Report. That was quite a celebration, that fist punt from Jason Duffner. We don't see a lot of that from you out there. You've, no. made, you've made a lot of great putts in your career, but making that one out there, how would you rate it? Um, it's up there. Those 30 footers a little bit easier for me than those three footers, apparently. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I played really well today. I, I stuck in there. I felt really confident going into the back nine. I kind of got through the front nine. Um, and I felt like, all right, we got a chance to win this. Let's be aggressive. And I was proud that I was able to do that. Um, wish the 18th hole had been a little bit easier um, than that. But it's always nice to make 35 footer for par. I, I'm believing you have to be proud considering what happened yesterday when you posted that 77 a game. You called pathetic. How did you turn it into a 68 today? Um, you know, I, I, I said yesterday it's a 72 hole golf tournament. So the nice thing about the first two days that I had a big lead is, you know, I could fall a little bit like I did yesterday and still have a chance. Um, and it kind of happened to me at the PGA when I won. I shot 63 on Friday, really struggled the next day, um, but was able to, you know, play really well on Sunday. So um, it was big for me on the front nine. I think I made about a six footer on the first hole, give me a little bit of confidence and get going. Um, but that's how golf is. You got to put it behind you. We all have bad days out here. Um, unfortunately, mine was played out in national television, um, but I'm excited that today was better. Finally, I know Jack Nicklaus means a lot to you. He means a lot to the game to shake his hand as a winner at his tournament. What are those emotions? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, to be honest, I didn't really start playing golf until the late 90s. Um, I knew about him, but I didn't really get to see him play in his prime. 
Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, the major championships that he's won, all the tournaments that he's won. But the biggest thing is to have events like this that we can play in um, and all the things that he gives back to the game. It's really proud to be a champion of his tournament, uh, proud to be the second Ohioan to win his golf tournament. So a pretty good company right there. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And Jason Duffner and Jack Nicholas forever tied now as the only two Ohio born winners of the Memorial. As you take a look at the worst third round scores to win over the last 35 years. And Kenny Knox, Nick Faldo and now Jason Duffner with the 77 comes back to win. Would have been easy to pack it in for sure after such a rough Saturday. But to know you're only four shots back and still in the golf tournament that big lead that you had built on Thursday and Friday allowed you to have a 77 and not be out of it talk about the the perseverance you showed yeah I think yesterday uh, after the round was over you, you you just you get in that mindset you, I still have a chance to win this golf tournament I didn't play myself out of it but I still have a chance and I think he just so such great perseverance great confidence in what he was doing He has a new new setup with the putter uh, how is that now going to work like David had mentioned before Saturday was the first time he tested it in that moment Sunday he got to relax a little bit and he looked very very relaxed and patient with his putting stroke today and uh, just giving himself that chance on Sunday uh, with some solid ball striking a better better uh, you know start to the day kind of let the round get in get to him and then he took advantage of some really really excellent golf shots. Oh, you guys talk all the time about letting the round come to you and work your way into the round. I would assume it's easier when the spotlight of the final group and every single shot being shown on television. Uh, Jason he had six seven holes where he was unseen today able to just kind of work his way into things David. Yeah they call it under the radar if if you will um, you know he had had an atrocious round yesterday really rough day on the greens putting um, but he's only four shots behind and, and that was a, from a non winner up to this point in his career Daniel Summerhays the way he played Daniel yesterday the way Daniel played yesterday was stellar and it looked like for all intents and purposes he'd do the same thing today especially after the way he started but it's difficult winning a golf tournament and let alone difficult winning your first golf tournament let alone winning your first golf tournament here Yes. at Mirrorfield Village. It, it, there's a lot, there was a lot stacked against him today, and, and you heard him even talk about he played better than his score. They talked about on the broadcast, played better than his score, but that's, those are the kind of things that happen when you're trying to win your golf tournament. Jason Duffer now, on the other hand, got an atrocious round out of the way, recognized and got a feeling of how the changes he had made to his putting were going to feel under the, under the gun and under the heat of it, and, and, and he adjusted today, fell back into the position of, hey, you know what, I'm not out of this. I have a chance. Still, I just got to go out and do the things I did through the first two days. Well, he's 40 years old now, and you think about it, he is a major championship, a winner. He won the PGA Championship. He was a winner last year, uh, winning the career builder, and now to win a second consecutive year at 40. Uh, what does this do for the rest of his career? What is this set up for Jason Nuffner at 40 years of age? This win right here is next to the majors is right, right there, you know, especially with what, what this means, where it's at. Uh, who's involved in this and you could just see you know as, as Jason is walking off the green and, and greeted by Jack I mean that that means something that is very very special and uh, this is a big event this is a big win for, for Jason it gets him you know much into the discussion for the President's Cup team well on his way to next year's Ryder Cup team pretty much you know in into the Tour Championship at 40 years old when you start winning golf tournaments like this one these are just extra stamps on your resume and he's won the PGA he's won at Palm Springs um, and now to add this the, the memorial I think is uh, just a, a, a great capper he's not done the way he's swinging the golf club now and the, and the, and the confidence that he's showing you know with a, with his putting right now I mean this he, it's the full full package if he could get a little bit of freedom with the putter that's what we're, we, we talk about a lot with him it struggles that way but if you gain a little bit of freedom, especially after you make some tweaks like he had, putt well through the first couple of days this week, struggle on the greens like he did yesterday, but come back today, roll the ball well. Uh, some really key putts, the tough putts, the, the one on 12, the left to rider, when you're working on your stroke, those are not easy. The, the, the second putt on the 15th hole, the four footer, 
pretty big bender left to right. You have to really stroke it well. You have to be committed to what you're doing, the line, the speed, all those things to make those putts. And those, those two putts in particular to me today show that he gained some confidence, recognized the kind of shortcomings he may have had under the heat of it, but made them today. You know, and if he can, if he can free it up that much more moving forward, uh, the way he consistently hits the golf ball, I might get to talk about him a little more often. You know, we try to identify before each tournament what kind of player would be best suited to win that week. And oftentimes, uh, when looking to identify the player at the Memorial, uh, you say, yeah, it's not really, a, or not really a bomber's course. It's not really a short horse course. It, it, it identifies you. This week, it was for the ball strikers. And Jason Duffner, first in, in greens and regulation, he, he struck the golf ball to win this golf tournament. Well, week in, week out, and especially over the longevity of a career, you've got to hit the golf ball well. You can't count on being a great putter. You're not going to be that. And you, if you are, it's not going to last. You know, we all talk about as age creeps up on all of us, right? <laughs> yes. It, it, it's rare that you stay that way. But longevity, this is a hitting contest in professional golf. It ha always has been and always will be. When we all say it's a putting contest, and it's just not the case. You've mm. got to hit the ball well if you want to win golf tournaments. And certainly Jason Duffner did that as he is a winner once again on the PGA Tour. When we come back, Ricky Fowler seemed to have control of this golf tournament, put himself in a great position on Sunday. In the end, he gets caught and passed by his good friend, Jason Dufter. We'll look at Ricky's day when we come back. Golf Central is brought to you by Titleist, the number one ball at the Memorial Tournament. Bushnell Golf and the Pro X2 with enhanced slope switch technology.